Hi there, I'm Keith Cauley, and this is Thrive, a Bridgestone America's podcast where we explore our company through compelling conversations with teammates across our organization. We launched Thrive in early 2021 with a conversation with our president and CEO, Paolo Ferrari, which helped us outline our North Star framework and the path forward for Bridgestone Americas. Now, a year and a half later, we're welcoming Paolo back to the microphone for an update on that progress, but also to help explore the next step in our global sustainability journey, the Bridgestone E8 commitment, which was introduced by our global CEO in March of 2022. What is the Bridgestone E8 commitment? Why is it important? And where does it all fit together with our North Star and beyond? Paolo is here to help us break it all down. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Well, we are joined today by a recurring guest, uh, someone we've talked to before, but it's been a little bit of a, of a, a calendar year or so in between. Um, but Paolo Ferrari, our uh, CEO and president of Bridgestone Americas, also with a new title that we'll talk about because a lot's happened since the last time we talked, yeah. hasn't it, Paolo? <laughs> well, good to see you, Keith. Congratulations on the studio. It's beautiful and good to be with you. Absolutely. We've got a lot to talk about, a lot to uh, kind of... Uh, explain and learn and and really just try to get a little more depth on. Um, but first, talking about really a, a new title, a recent announcement as we talk together. Um, but in addition to leading BSAM as president and CEO, now also the joint global COO, uh, chief operating officer, one of two uh, for Bridgestone globally. So congratulations in order Thank for you. you. Uh, and also, I guess, tell us a little bit about uh, this structural change, the the intention behind it and what this is now for you. Well, first of all, I'm honored. I'm humbled. Obviously, it's a big, uh, you know, token of recognition for me. Uh, but the first thing I want to say is that, of course, I wouldn't even be considered for a position like this if it wasn't for the great work that the team has done in Europe with me and for me between 2016 and 2019, and also the BSAM team, of course, in the last two, little over two years, almost two and a half years at this point. So, you know, I strongly believe that you're only as good as your team is. And that's why, honestly, I'm here today. So I'm, I'm humbled. Uh, I'm excited. I'm happy. I think there's a lot of great things to do. I think it's part of a, our, our globalization, right? Our, our effort to think more globally uh, under a globally aligned commitment, the North Star and vision, um, the opportunity to do more global optimization across, across our operations, across our solutions business. So of course, I know the journey and the team in Europe very well. I know the team here well, and we have a lot of opportunities for us to work, work together and really continue to deploy and enhance our vision, our strategy on our A business, our B business, our C business, our sustainability journey in a joint way. There are two very similar SBUs with very similar culture. So the opportunity to do things together is really great. Absolutely. And I know North Star here in BSAM has been something we've been heavily focused on. But like you said, there's elements of that that connect to what's happening in the different regions, obviously to the vision globally. But here in the region, we talked at the first podcast of, of the uh, entire uh, run of episodes and then again about sustainability. But it's been about 15 months or so since we sat down how would you evaluate, I guess, what you laid out at that time, the North Star journey? Uh, how has it been in your eyes to this point? So I'm extremely happy. As you know, we monitor the KPIs around the North Star. So are people aware of it? Nearly 100%. Are people excited by it? Are engaged with it? All these metrics have been growing month after month and after month. And I have to also um, give a shout out to the North Star team, the marketing team, because what we've done really basically at this point, uh, mid-2020, mm -hmm. is really begin to, uh, first of all, work with Shu ishibashi on our global CEO, about the new vision and the new business strategy. It made sure that we captured in a nice, cohesive way, which we call our North Star framework, all these new framework that were coming out of, you know, of Shu's thinking, ishibashi -san's thinking, and that we contributed to. So I think that it was a great effort in to put in this together, you know, the foundation, the vision, the business, and the team element of our North Star, which is complicated initially, and then continue to cascade both from me personally, the executive committee, the leaders did a tremendous job into cascading this into each of the areas, the business segments, the operations. We're now in a situation people can really identify and they're excited around it. And honestly, every project that you see and also ultimately our financial performance show that the team is aligned around the North Star. And I think that's a great deal of satisfaction for me and for the team. It's got to be an interesting thing too, because 
we rolled it out, like you said, it was late 2020 where we weren't seeing each other in person a lot. It was a lot of over uh, the virtual communications that we were doing. As you started to see people come back into the office a little bit more, or at least bump into each other with more regularity, is it a little bit different to see the, like you said, the awareness has grown. And so people kind of fully understand where we're at, where when we rolled it out, we couldn't touch and feel and see everybody. And now we're together and we're aligned on this whole vision. Yeah, and first of all, I almost forgot that we've done all of that during the <laughs> pandemic, which has been incredible. And again, thanks to the team because the team has been truly resilient. Um, I think what I noticed, especially now that I can travel a bit more and go to stores, mm -hmm. go to the plants, uh, go to Akron, you know, I'm gonna go to CFNA very shortly. When I go to the sites, I see the elements and the icons of the North Star taking shape. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, I can monitor the project from distance and I can see that I align to the North Star. But when you go see there, you see the screens, you see posters on the wall, you see presentations. Every presentation that we go through has, you know, one of the uh, four elements icons. So you can see that people, you know, we're talking about this topic and it relates to that part of the North Star. Mm -hmm. That tells you that they are connected. And that tells you they are prioritizing their jobs and their project based on whether they influence or not the North Star. So when you travel and you go see people, you actually feel that even more than in the many teams meeting that we're doing. Yeah. So the, the second conversation we had on the podcast in season one was focused on sustainability and what it means to you, how it's influenced you through your, uh, your life journey. Uh, certainly something that is ingrained at the core of Bridgestone that we always talk about. And now the, the other big, um, I guess, recent announcement is the introduction of a new corporate sustainability commitment. Um, and so that is the Bridgestone E8 commitment. We haven't talked about it much on the podcast. We wanted to kind of allow uh, you to kind of help explain and, and introduce it to the audience a little bit. Um, but coming from our global CEO, Shu Ishibashi-san, uh, what is, in your mind, the, the Bridgestone E8 commitment and why is it important? So, as you say, sustainability has been in Bridgestone DNA for decades, mm -hmm. which is really wonderful. Our North Star talked about sustainability, part of our vision statement. But the Bridgestone um, E8 corporate commitment takes into a whole nother level. And uh, it's really an even broader and high level commitment to sustainability as a group. Uh, Ishibashi-san defines this as an access to management. What does it, does it mean? It's something that management can always go back to and understand Am I doing something that relates to some of the eight E's that, is, that are part of our corporate commitment? It's also a way that we're going to gain the trust of future generations. Things how powerful it is. We're going to stay here for the next hundreds of years. So we need to make sure that what we do today truly influences the way our gen the next generation are going to think of Bridgestone. Are we contributing to a better world, a better planet, a better overall sustainability journey uh, for, for generations to come? So it's very powerful. The eight E's are wonderful. They really define sustainability in a broad way, clearly very close to our products, very close to our solutions, very close to our DNA, but also very close to the team element of our North Star when it comes to the empowerment. So it's really a much broader commitment in this journey. And I like it because... We also, the way we've been positioned within, Bridge, within uh, BSAM, E8 commitment is truly our corporate commitment. Mm -hmm. Our North Star is our vision. And then, of course, we will talk about more the campaign that we're going to deploy in the next several months, which is what really matters, is our voice. So they really fit well together. And it's important for me to say that because this is just not another framework that replaces other things. It's clearly... Uh, embedded in a way goes hand in hand with our North Star framework. Yeah, and you, you listen to Ishibashi-san talk about it. I mean, he has a, a very specific perspective and intention with a lot of how this came together. Um, the the ease that were selected, we can go through them uh, b briefly. Not going to have you recall them all, <laughs> though. Though I know obviously you can. Um, but but energy and ecology, so things that are somewhat tangible when people think of sustainability around you know carbon neutrality around the environment. Um, efficiency, extension, and economy are three that I think we see a lot in a lot of the solutions that we're going to, but also our core products, yeah. right, um, and delivering that for customers and society. Uh, and then the last three are ease, emotion, and empowerment, empowerment. which you mentioned. Um, all of them serving a little bit of a different area of value to society. Um, when you first saw that list, were there any that kind of jumped out to, to you? So first of all, let me tell you that also, the way we have begun to uh, graphically represent E8 and our North Star 
is very important. And we begin to show this during the town hall that we had a couple of months ago, where the E8 commitment and the E's really kind of, they kind of hug the North Star, <laughs> right? Uh, because again, they go hand in hand. So the E8 commitment is a higher level commitment, but the North Star foundation, vision, business, and teams are very much alive and kicking. And, um, and they really sort of are connecting in a way that when we talk about the ease of the E8, we can point out how they refer to the, the, the vision or the business or the teams. And when we talk about the team or the, sort of the elements of the North Star, we can actually flag out the ease that they relate to. So they're really interlinked and interdependent. The other point I'd like to make is that, yeah, this is a new framework in a way, a new commitment. But it's not like we're starting from scratch. And uh, uh, it's very, I would say, encouraging to see that every project that we have worked on, certainly in the last two years, but even more, can already be linked to some of the ease. So when we talk about our, you know, our renewable energy effort in the plants, they clearly relate to energy, to economy, to ecology. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about the performance of our product, the rolling resistance performance of our products, the uh, material circularity number, which is, again, how sustainable the materials are in our time, all these things relate to, um, of course, again, to ecology, to the environment. Uh, when we do run flat technology or sealant technology, it's about the extension of the life. When we do retrade, it's about the extension of the life of the tires. Um, when we talk about mobility solutions, tire-centric solutions, fleet management, it is about the economy of the fleet. It is about the efficiency of the fleet. When we talk about Indy and the motorsport, it's clear about emotions. And uh, when we talk about our brands, our campaign, it's all about emotion. When we talk about, of course, the cultural characteristics, the DNI, the free to be, all these new fantastic initiatives around DNI, it is about empowerment. So as you can see, I could list tens if not more projects that already today not only link to the North Stars, as you would expect, they already link to the E8 and to the various E's. So you will see us portraying also our project, how do they link to the North Star, to our vision, our business, and what kind of E, E's do they light up? And I think the two things together are, is what makes our journey really powerful. Yeah. Well, and it makes a lot of sense when you frame it as it's not like these are things we need to start doing now because they're changing direction. It's uh, a lot of the language that we've seen come from Japan on this is referring it with an adjective of Bridgestone like. So they're, they're calling these values Bridgestone like values. And to hear you put it like that, it makes a little bit more sense because it's like these are elements that Bridgestone was already focused on delivering in, a, in different ways. We're now just collecting them as part of a, a, a visible one-stop commitment. Absolutely. So to speak. And in addition, Keith, um, we talk about um, purpose and process. Mm -hmm. It's important because, of course, all our, 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 our vision, our projects, our product, our solution is about, you know, our products and, and, and how this comes alive, but also in the way we do things. So the process piece is also important. The way we make our products, the way we carry out our jobs every day, so again, it's very important to, to, to highlight those points because it highlights the broader commitment in the what, in the how, in the purpose, in the process, and it gives a sign of how deep and how important this commitment is. And can you share, I guess, a little bit about the journey of how something like this comes to life? Because it, this and the, the vision, the mid to long-term business plan that Ishibashi-san laid out, I mean, these aren't two or three conversations in a small meeting and then all of a sudden we do it. This is a long road of evaluation and conversation and perspective. How does something like this become a, a commitment that now we introduce and how does it fit the discussion of why we need to state it now and forward? So many things around this question sure. because um, uh, first of all, I think it shows the openness and the transparency in conversation that we have in our group from a governance point of view. We work together on the new vision and the business, and he calls it this the punching bag, right? He shares idea, and I go back to him, and we shape this together. So the E8, in a way, followed a similar path to the vision, the ABC strategy, and everything that was in our North, is in our North Star. The second point is that BSAM is well over 50% of the group's business. So mm -hmm. we are very big, very important. So we're always expected to lead, 
to lead in terms of disruption, to lead in terms of business performance, to lead in terms of innovation. So I'm proud to say that the first initial thought around E, which we actually called E to the X, maybe you don't know that, <laughs> came from the BSAM team. Now, it was an idea around our products. Uh, we thought our products already deserved many E's, almost as a, as a, you know, as a token of appreciation, right? as, as a medal, as, of course, round flat is already extension, seed is, is extension, roller resistance. So it was mostly around our product. But the E to the X, X concept really resonated with Shibashi-san. And he said, let's just work more on that. Let's expand its scope. And it became a much broader E8 commitment. So I like to say that all the ideas that we bounce around with Shu coming from BSAM, they're very much appreciated around our product concept became the E8 commitment. There you go. It's the behind the scenes, it's the, the behind the music story of uh, the E8 commitment Absolutely. there. What, we can get into some other, what are some other good ideas that haven't come come to light? No, we won't, <laughs> we won't dive in there. Um, Next podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I was going to ask, uh, we talked about it a little bit. I think one of the natural questions for teammates as they see this for the first time is, well, how does the E8 commitment and the North Star fit together? You've talked about it. Uh, the, the giving the hug around, but the larger picture to the the local picture and it being transversal, I think we've covered there. But I don't know if if somebody were to catch you in an elevator and say, where do these connect for me? Yeah. I don't, what is your quick elevator ride answer? Again, I like the hierarchy that we discussed before. Bridgestone E8 is our corporate commitment. North Star is our vision. What really matters is our voice. And in that order, very well. Graphically, as I said, the E is kind of hug around the North Star. Uh, and you will see us using this in, 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 in parallel in a way. Uh, so when we will discuss about, um, again, a new fantastic tire-centric solutions that will come in the next weeks, they're already existing, but a new one, then we will know that that clearly feeds our vision because it's about more efficient and sustainable mobility. By the way, here I am already using one of the E's as I <laughs> describe this. It fits into our vision, it fits into our B element of the ABC, and it lights up all kinds of E's in the Bridgestone EA commitment. So I could use examples on our product, as I did before. What E's do they light up, and where does it belong in the North Star? I could use ex uh, examples around our d &I journey, and and go on like this, graphically, conceptually. And I think that as we cascade this, this in a way, you know, uh, joint deployment of E8 and the North Star, people will be able to make this connection by themselves, and we will find also a great way graphically and creatively to to make this link even more evident. Yeah, I think as we look at the what the Bridgestone E8 commitment is meant to represent, right? We talk about the impact on future generations, earning the trust of future generations. Um, what really matters is an element that you said will be kind of our voice to bring a lot of these elements uh, to life. Uh, and we're going to talk about that in a couple of uh, future episodes as a tease right there for what's to come. Um, but it seems to be a little bit of maybe a traditional of what people think of Bridgestone is the core product, the tire, and it's about performance and it's about that quality. And in the last few years, there's been a shift of trying to not get away from the focus on the product, but turning it more the attention on the value the product or what we do delivers and the impact it makes on the world, as opposed to look at how great these products are. Would you say that's fairly accurate? And is the E8 commitment kind of part of that emotional yeah, shift? I would say even more. Yeah. Honestly, even just in the last two years, but maybe in the last three, four years, I mean, the world out there has changed dramatically. The attention to sustainability from any stakeholder, stakeholder management is becoming a lot more important than just simply shareholder management. The changes in regulation, the disruption in technology, the changes in consumer behaviors, new generation broadly being more sensitive to these topics, both in terms of being consumer as well as being potential talent pool for us. We, we, needed to turn our natural sustainability DNA into something bigger and more visible. And this is really what E8 Commitment is all about. So it's for ourselves as executives and as teammates. It's for the potential talent pool. It's for our, it's for our consumers. It's for our partners. I sat down recently with, uh, we did top to top meetings with General Motors, mm -hmm. with UPS, with Penske, uh, US Auto Force, Microsoft, Amazon. When you sit down with these big companies, the first thing you do in order to assess whether there's a future together, are we aligned on culture? 
are we allowed on commitment to sustainability? And our ability to sit down and show that we have an EAT commitment laid out the way we did, it's like we're playing in the NFL of football or in the Champions League of football. We, we are in that league. And we look at each other and say, yeah, we share the same path. Let's talk business. So any stakeholder for us was important to say, here's our EAT commitment. Come and work for us. Here's our EAT commitment. Buy our products and solutions. Here's our EAT commitment, partners. Let's come together and co-create. The starting point is this commitment because it allows the stakeholders in a very different world compared to just even three or four years ago. Yeah. And that leads nicely into another question and curiosity I had is we've seen so much of the focus now also with Ishibashi san and the vision for 2050 around co-creation, which you just mentioned. We've had a lot more focus on and really realization that we can't do everything ourselves. There are, there are people out there that have more expertise in areas that we also want to get to. Uh, how have you seen the shift in, in maybe the last two years or a few more, but also like why is that co-creation focus so important for Bridgestone's viability of the future? Yeah. So I'm going to use this, this topic to make also another point. Oftentimes they ask us, you know, what makes Bridgestone different mm -hmm. than our main competitors? And uh, all competitors are phenomenal. Uh, but I would say there's a couple of them that are similar to us in a way that they have a slightly broader scope beyond tires, mobility, and sustainability. And I think, and they're wonderful companies. So clearly our technology and our product sets us apart. But the way that we interact with our partners is really a big competitive advantage. We're easy to do business with. We're open in sharing what we're working on. We're open to share our technology, especially as we go into software and digitalization, it's important that we show our partners what we're doing because as we say in our ABC strategy, it's about creating value as a system. So especially again, as we go into software, digitalization, sustainable mobility, and all of our platforms that you know we have invested in heavily in the last few years. We can't do this alone. So our opening up to the partners of the ecosystem of the partners is absolutely key. It's easy to say, but for big companies, companies with an industrial legacy is not so easy to do so. I think we do it really well. And this is why Microsoft and Amazon, wonderful partnership on their connected vehicle and their cloud platforms. Penske, wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Uh, GM, the OEMs, the emerging OEMs. It's about really showing each other what kind of assets do we have how do we put them together to create value as a system? It's absolutely key. And again, the E8 commitment is part of this journey. We showed these partners, hey, we're here with a very ambitious commitment to sustainability on multiple E's, on multiple angles. Let's work together. Yeah. The, with the, the introduction of E8, we're also introducing a concept, uh, Enlighten. Um, and so I know for, for teammates, it's a lot of maybe new words, new ideas. <laughs> um, but I, I think this is a good point to kind of bring that into the conversation too, because they're going to start seeing this a little bit more. Um, and I think if people see it initially, they might put it in its different boxes. But uh, we were talking the other day, it is another holistic ABC covers a lot of the different areas. But when people here enlighten, what should they do? Yeah. First of all, I want to thank our teammates because they've seen us roll out a lot of these new <laughs> concepts. And I would say better to have too many than nothing, because uh, sure. it's just a science of creativity and I'm pushing the business ahead. So appreciate that. So enlighten, uh, I'll try to make it simple sure. and draw a parallel. So clearly I hope by now all of our teammates are, co are familiar with the word mix. So we're we've, focused we've on mix. We've said it a few times We've said here. it a few times. Mix so is mix it. is technology yeah. applied to a product that eventually leads to superior performance for basically higher profit. So I think when we talked, when we started working together in 2020, it was about end-to-end -end mixed focus. End-to-end -end means that it's not just the technology of the product, it's about how we sell the product, it's about how we manufacture the product, it's about how we stock the product. And basically along the value chain, how do we make sure that all of the organization focuses on mix? In a way, Enlighten, it's about really expanding this concept whereby now that Enlighten is cer certainly a technology stack on products, but it has a lot more also of a digital angle, a lot more of a sustainable angle. So our products not just need to be great from a pure technology stack, they have to be fully connected and they have to be have sustainable materials. And they have to be produced in factories that are as much as possible uh, and as soon as possible green and smart. 
and they need to be uh, connected to a supplier base that is also aligned to an E8 commitment like Journey. So it's an end-to-end, full-value chain, technology, digital, and sustainable roadmap, which is very much linked to E8, of course, but also very much entrenched into our products, our solutions, and our operations. So more to come on this because, of course, it requires more explanation. But in the national, that's what it is, and it's exciting because it's another thing that is well linked to the E8 and is well linked, as you said, to the ABC and to the vision. It's, it's, and we had Will Robbins on a couple of episodes ago to talk about the consumer product planning process and trying to predict the future. And he mentioned Enlighten as one of those investments of focus that we were making in that rollout of the next five to 10 years. And his kind of terminology was, I, I, I like that it kind of connected exactly what you just said. He, a lot of times we're trying to do things sustainably or we're trying to deliver the best products uh, or processes. And Enlighten is basically saying we will not compromise on any of those. We want to be able to deliver all of those at the best scale or ability. Um, and we believe we can do that moving forward. Is that Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's always, you know, the next challenge. Mm -hmm. Uh, like exactly you said, you talked about you know performance and sustainability. Are they trade-offs? Well, we're gonna turn all of this into trade-offs through our technology, through our digitalization. So can gonna write we write that down? Trade-offs. Trade-offs. Trade honestly, that is the core job of our broader R and D and innovation team. How do we make sure that we continue to stretch our technology so that we we will deliver more wear without giving up grip? that would deliver more performance with more sustainable material. That's our job. That we deliver a better performance to fleet thanks to sensoring technology without altering the dynamic of a tire. So it's about trade-offs. And honestly, that's what Brayson is best at. It's about technology, digitalization, within a much broader commitment to sustainability. I see those relate to the ABC model. They relate to extension and efficiency and economy and energy well piecing it all together i think that's, that's where, why you're good at what you well, do well that's we're, we're taking a lot of notes over here it's <laughs> helpful to have it in front of me but i think that's where the the proof points as we try to explain those things help really give that tangible connectivity um and help resonate where we're working and and hopefully we'll start to see that with the north star now feeling a little bit more uh, comfortable and aware and focused on driving that while also seeing the larger world of Bridgestone through the lens of uh, the E8 commitment. Absolutely. So, um, and so as we close then, I guess, in your mind, what are the next steps? We always kind of take a turn to the future as we wrap up, but there's been so much the last couple of, uh, of months and, and two years or so, um, but I don't. I guess we're not slowing down, are we? <laughs> no, we're not slowing down. And um, I mean, just in conclusion, I would say incredible two and a half years I think we spoke a lot about how appreciative we are of our team and what they've done in the last two years due to COVID. But I do want to spend a few seconds saying, what about the last couple of months? Our cyber incident has been, of course, a significant event, and we're still kind of recovering from it. But the speed in which we're recovering is just nothing short of extraordinary, and I want to thank the team. And within this, we are deploying the aid commitment. We keep on deploying our North Star, new projects, new solutions, new products, new investments, a lot of investments in our capacity. There's a lot. So what's next? Honestly, keep on focusing on execution because we have so much <laughs> that we have rolled out in the last couple of years that it's important to, to keep that traction. And um, yeah, and, and honestly, it's an exciting time. I think uh, a lot of headwinds, of course, in the market between the geopolitical risk, uh, between, you know, the broader implication of this in the economy. Um, but I think that what we've done in the last two and a half years is build a super resilient organization. We build the fundamental of our business that are so strong that no matter what the economy will give to us toward the end of this year and next year, we're gonna be super strong. We are super strong. The two crises, and I'm gonna say COVID and cyber, really proved us that we are a super strong organization, that we made the structural changes that we needed to do, the new projects and the mm -hmm. new roadmap um, really makes it a strong Bridgestone, like Ishibashi like to say, and leading into the Bridgestone 3.0. I think it's an exciting time in an industry whose fundamentals remain strong. So it's a good time to be in our industry and a good time to be a Bridgestone. Yeah. I, I remember back the first conversation we had where it was during the, the throes of the pandemic and you had noted about how these are challenges, but they're also 
opportunities. And a lot of it's a matter of personal perspective and your ability to look at things with that lens. But as you reflect back, like you just did on um, the IT security situation, on the, the pandemic, these were challenges to significant degrees that have pivoted Bridgestone and created opportunities for us to move forward. And right? the proof point of that is every, every, we took those crises, um, we turned them truly into opportunity in many different ways. And the proof points that I'm very confident with our organization is that already today, because of the cyber crisis, naturally, all of our teams are saying, how do we leapfrog mm -hmm. in certain areas of systems given what happened? Look at the attitude. It's amazing. Yep. It's actually fantastic. So, you know, whatever other headwinds will come our way, we have what we begin to call actually an anti-fragile organization, <laughs> which is a new concept which we elaborate more. It's more than resilient. It's like rubber, right? It's more than resilient. <laughs> We're anti-fragile, which is amazing. There you go. Well, we appreciate the time uh, to, to sit down and chat through some of these things. We know you've got a lot of other things to get to and go, but to take some time to to really dive in and and share your perspective, but also just your, your passion about the, these things uh, will hopefully resonate with our teammates. And uh, we appreciate the time. Keith, thank you. Congratulations on the success of the podcast Thank really you. well done is is another we got to keep bringing you on that's what yeah. that spikes the spikes the uh, numbers a little bit it's nice i don't think so <laughs> always available for you awesome thank you so much pal so tying that all together at bridgestone our mission of serving society with superior quality is always why we exist in the future we've outlined that it will come through the value we provide as a sustainable solutions company as bridgestone 3.0 so the Bridgestone E8 commitment helps broadly define in those eight focus areas what that value is. And our North Star framework is the visionary roadmap for how we are activating the E8 commitment here in Bridgestone Americas. As noted, we'll soon complete the puzzle with one more piece later this season on Thrive by introducing our new brand campaign, What Really Matters, which will be the voice through which we communicate all of these efforts. But if you want to hear more from Paolo, you can revisit our conversations with him from season one, wherever it is you listen to podcasts. While there, you can also give us a rating, a review, and remember you can also watch our season three episodes on the Bridgestone America's YouTube page. And as always, you can reach us via email, uh, send us a question, a topic idea, or some feedback to thrivepodcast at bfusa.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Keith Colley, telling you to keep on keeping on. And remember, as always, that at Bridgestone, today, tomorrow, together, we thrive. Be good, everybody. <laughs>